It's easy to grow cynical and to retreat into our own contained and demanding worlds of, of family and work and, um, and the other problems that we confront uh, that confront us. But I'd like to share with you a story that happened to me. When I was 21 years old, I took a summer internship at Amnesty International in Washington, DC. And I w spent that time documenting abuses committed by US immigration officials against refugees from El Salvador. And I was horrified to learn that my country was treating the most destitute with such disdain. But I also learned about refuseniks in Russia and anti-apartheid activists in South Africa and the mothers of the disappeared in El Salvador. And I learned that there was a, a whole world out there of activists who were trying to create change in their, in their countries. The cause was compelling, the enemy was dangerous and powerful. But I found that I was surrounded by Davids who with little more than the slingshots of their heart and nerve and sinew to support them, stood up against a world full of Goliaths. And if you look back at, what the, at the changes that have been made around the world over the last 30 years, it looks like the angels prevailed. So when I started working in 1981, all of Latin America was under right-wing military dictatorships. Today, there's not a right-wing military dictatorship left standing. All, yeah. All of the Eastern Europe was under communist leaders. Today, there's not a communist government in Eastern Europe. South Africa was at the height of apartheid. Today, South Africa is at a series of freely elected governments elected by a majority of their people. And women's rights was not on the international agenda. In fact, it wasn't until Hillary Clinton went to China in 1995 and declared women's rights are human rights, which was revolutionary at the time, that women's rights got on the international agenda. And since then, CEDAW, which is the Women's Rights Convention at the United Nations, has been ratified by 183 different countries. Oh. Now, how did those changes take place? None of those changes took place because governments wanted them to. In fact, governments tried to stop them. And they didn't take place because armies wanted them to. In fact, great armies tried to stop them. And they didn't take place because huge multinational corporations wanted them to. In fact, multinational corporations wanted to stop them. They took place because small groups of determined people, as Margaret Mead said, harnessed the dream of freedom and made it come true. And they band together and they said, what's going on is wrong and we're gonna create change. So I just wanna leave you with this. We're here tonight listening to these incredible stories of the civil rights movement. And that's important because it's part of our history. But it's really part of our present and part of our future. And what we need to learn tonight is how you create change. How do you create structural change in our, in our community, in our country, and our world? And that's the lessons we all have to walk, walk out of here with, that each of us has a role to play, that each of us can work together to create change, and that's how our world is gonna get better. Thank you very much.